The past couple of days have been absolutely hectic, but I'm now back home, I'm now back in my setup, I'm gonna be grinding out a lot of content here for Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and there is still so much to talk about that I really wanna get out of the way and out there for all you guys that may be wondering on how everything goes, because like we talked about in not only our opinions video and our little first initial breakdown of it and everything, there is so much that is brand new and so much that is slightly or majorly changed within Black Ops 4 that I figured we need to do a lot of talking to break this all down for you guys, to bring it to an easy understanding because I played for a little bit of time. Yes, I watched a ton of my footage back and there's still so much that even I feel like there's a lot of overwhelming things within the game. So today, we're going to break it down piece by piece and give you guys everything brand new within the new create a class system within Black Ops 4. We're going to take a look at everything individually, give you guys the explanation of how things work, all that kind of stuff. So this might be a little bit lengthy, but it is going to give you guys pretty much all the information you need to know about the create a class system itself. So that said, sit back, relax, and let's jump into some Black Ops for content. So first things first, unfortunately, I cannot give you guys menu footage. That is something that is against the rules for all these embargoes and everything that we have for early gameplay of all sorts, whether that be actual early gameplay that we've seen for any reveal like World War II at E3 or DLC stuff. I'm never allowed to show that menu footage, unfortunately. So I'm going to do my best to absolutely describe it in as best a way as possible to show you guys what all I can. And if I can't actually put in some screenshots of some very specific things, I'll do my best to do that as well. But when you first jump into the actual creator class itself, you're actually not going to have that linear selection of classes like we've seen in the past, where it's all on the left side, and then your class preview is on that right side. We don't see it like that. Instead, it's a tabular type thing, where if you imagine how you would cycle through your different weapon classifications in, say, World War II, from rifles to SMGs to snipers, that kind of stuff, that's actually where you choose which class you're going to be creating, or editing editing, at least in this build for the game. This is pre-alpha take in mind, so it may be subject to change in the future. But then you have the previews of each weapon as they come, and you have the ability to choose a primary, secondary, the attachments for both of those, gear, equipment, perks, and then wild cards with up to three perks without wild cards, and you can take actually three wild cards as well. All of these things, though, are customizable and custom tailored to however you want to play. Just bear in mind that the pick 10 system is returning, so you only have 10 slots to designate for your entire class setup. So whether that be a weapon with two attachments and a secondary and an attachment with three perks, then a gear and an equipment, that's up to you. Or if you want to change it out so that you have six perks and a weapon and maybe three attachments, then that's completely up to you again. So it is very custom tailored to how we've seen, but the pick 10 system is limiting in that capacity. So let's start off though with the primaries, that being all of the weapons within Call of Duty World War II. We won't have any gameplay for all of these just yet. We're gonna be doing a video on that probably tomorrow or Monday, actually showcasing every single one. So if you guys are interested in that, stick around for that. But to list them off here for you guys, the weapons we had for the rifles of the ICR-7, the Rampart-17, the Vapor XKG, or the VAPR XKG. Then we had the SMGs of the MX-9, the Cordite, and the SOG 9mm. Then we had the tactical rifles of the Augur DMR and the Swordfish. Then the LMGs consisted of the Titan, only one there. Then we had the snipers of the Paladin HB-50 and the Koshka. And then we had secondary pistols, that being the Strife, and the shotgun being the MOG-12, and the launcher of the Helion Salvo. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that the ICR CR7 and the Rampart 17 are fantastic choices. The rifles, I can't really decide at the moment because I've only played, again, three to four games. We didn't really get enough time to really decipher what classification was very dominant. SMGs and rifles are, of course, still very relevant in the game and have a lot of firepower to them, but I couldn't actually say which was better than the other. But it was situational in the sense of, of course, SMGs being more close quarters and rifles being a longer range as well. So that stuff, of course, is very easy to pick apart. But as for attachments, once again, they do vary depending on whatever weapon you end up using. There is not anything that is across the board for every single classification like we've seen in previous titles. What we did have though in terms of optics were the ability to choose between the reflex or the recon sight. That attachments were very much so similarly FMJ, long barrel, rapid fire, extended mags, high caliber, things like that of the sort that we've seen all of these before. But the one thing that is new in terms of attachments is that we have attachment tiers for it. So one thing in particular that really stands out to me is things like FMJ 1 and 2, high caliber one and two things like that so for example high caliber one allows you to have more damage to the torso and presumably as well to the head as the high caliber attachment has always done whenever you rank it up however that may be in the full game what you'll have access to is actually high caliber two which will then extend that damage increase down to the legs so you'll end up having more damage across the body with that high caliber attachment two on the weapon itself now as it stands right now i can't say that i played around too much with both the tiers to see if they end up increasing the price 
case for the attachment in your pick 10 selection, i.e. that FMJ1 will only cost one, but FMJ2 will cost you two pick 10 slots. I can't tell you off the top of my head if that's how that works out. It would make sense if so, but that is still a new addition to the Creator class system overall. Now, another new thing within the Creator class system is a brand new selection of things called gear. So gear is broken down into five different pieces that what we saw in the pre-alpha gameplay at the reveal event. Obviously, they're very well maybe subject to many more of things in not only this selection, but also the entirety of this create a class system overall, because it's not the full game. So bear that in mind before we move forward a little bit further. But when you see this new classification of gear offered to us, we end up seeing the addition of body armor, stim shot, the comsec device, the acoustic sensor, and the equipment charge gear. So you can choose one of these for every class, but body armor is something that decreases the initial shot damage to players. Stim shot gives you the instant health regeneration as to what it normally is as a gradual regeneration process. The comsec device allows score streaks to be earned at a discounted rate. The acoustic sensor allows for enemy movements being made easier to hear, and it also triggers minimap indicators. And the equipment charge allows you to recharge your equipment and specialist weapons faster. So that's something that of course is very useful, but the one thing that I take away from this gear category from playing early on here of this is that stim shot is by far the most crutch out of these in the gear classification and body armor is a slight second maybe not so much as close as you may think but those two are definitely dominant in the gear category out of this entire playthrough and granted I only played against 11 other people in this but I did not come across anyone else using the comsec device the acoustic sensor or equipment charge that's how big these two are for this so again those offer you not increased health but decreased damage as well as the instant ability to recharge your health and that actual stim shot as well kind of throwing in again how more powerful it is the recharge time on that itself is only about 1.5 to 2 seconds as opposed to what the normal health regen is is about 6 to 7 seconds so you get it a lot more often and instant health. Moving away from the gear category though and into the equipment, this is where a lot of people may see a breakaway from the traditional Call of Duty mechanics and what may be actually a good thing for a lot of people because this is what breaks down even further into less grenade spam, less explosive spam, stuff like that that really I think makes it a lot more enjoyable in the sense of just going up for that right bumper or that lethal or tactical play is because it's just a big breakaway. So the big thing with this that is firstly available is the special special issue, which is the unique equipment assigned to each specialist. So each one of these will break down into something a little bit further. So say theoretically your barbed wire that you end up having or your heat wave core, things like that. Those will all be dependent on whatever specialist you end up choosing for the game and will be subject to change if you end up changing what you have in game for a specialist. But outside of that, you also have the trophy system, a Molotov, frag grenade and concussion, as well as a combat ax. So there really isn't all that much to offer in that sense outside of the special issue which is available once again and dependent upon your specialist but that's something that it is a big sacrifice to take away from what your specialist may have which may give you more assist points it may give you more points in just general or it may be more lethal but that's also something that if you want to sacrifice whatever your specialist may have you can take one of those five things that were previously named so it's definitely a big breakaway from how we've seen the different equipment being used within Call of Duty before but it's something that will be quite interesting to see how it goes moving forward now after equipment we end up coming down to our final two things here out of just the regular creative class system that being the perks as well as the wild cards so jumping into your perks how they work you of course still have your three tiers of perks with each having a separate number of them in there and this is probably not going to be the full total of the amount of perks for each perk that you have as it stands right now there were only four per tier that we end up seeing in this pre-alpha build but of course we saw in that earlier teaser there were what looked to be like six slots so it would not surprise me if we end up seeing six for each tier so eight 18 perks total. In that tier one category though, we end up having Engineer, Flak Jacket, Resistance, and Cold Blooded. Now we've seen all four of these perks before. The only difference is that Resistance is actually Tac Mask, just renamed. So that's something that will be a resistance to nine bang concussions, razor wire, and counter UAVs. So that's also very nice and it also adds in a few extra perks there as well. But Engineer allows you to show enemy equipment and score streaks and lock onto vehicles faster. Flak Jacket allows you to take less damage from enemy explosives, fire, and radiation. And then Cold Blooded is Resistance 
resistance to score streak targeting systems. So again, all stuff we've seen here, but then moving over into the second tier of perks, that's where we end up seeing Scavenger, Dexterity, Gung Ho, and Lightweight. Scavenger obviously allows you to replenish ammo from fallen players. Dexterity will allow you to mantle, climb, slide, and swap weapons faster, as well as give you increased weapon accuracy when jumping or mantling. Gung Ho will give you the ability to fire a weapon and use equipment while sprinting, and also allow you to recover from sprint faster, moving at full speed when reloading as well. And finally, in the tier two category, we have Lightweight, which will allow you to move faster and take no fall damage when falling. Tier three will allow us to have four other perks, those being Reveal, Dead Silence, Team Link, and Ghost. So Reveal is actually one that will allow you to see more on the Fog of War minimap. It gives you increased distance for that and the radius of that for the self and the teammates. Dead Silence will allow you to move quietly, of course, and resist detection from acoustic sensor. Team Link is a new one, which you can actually see friendly teammates through walls. Then Ghost is returning from previous titles in which you're undetectable by enemy UAVs while moving, planting or defusing bombs, or controlling score streaks. It also gives you reduced time of the reveal on the enemy sensor darts, as well as vision pulse. Now, the final thing to talk about in the creative class system deals with the wild cards because we have a few new faces into the wild card system and a lot are returning as well. So right off the bat, we end up having the ability for 14 different wild card selections in Black Ops 4. Of course, you can't use all of them. At the very most, you can end up taking three and that'll really cost you in terms of your pick 10 slots as well. But you end up having the ability for overkill, primary gunfighters one through three, underkill, secondary gunfighters one through three, and then also perk one, two, and three gluttony, as well as perk one, two, and three greed. So the differences here with these ones on the new additions are firstly underkill, which will allow you to take a secondary not in use and replace that for your primary. So you'd end up having two secondaries. So you can still do a pistol and shotgun category if you really want to, though admittedly, I'm not sure why you necessarily would. I don't think that I would ever really come into contact with this underkill play, but that's something that is there for the option. And then the new gluttony category of perks is where you can end up taking all three perks from one tier. Now, presumably this would allow you to take, if you want to do a perk one and two, you can end up taking three perks from tier one and then filling up your six perks with that tier two perk with both gluttonies active. But that's something that I don't know how well that would really work out for you, but it's totally possible there and is a new addition to that wild card system. Now, apart from the actual creator class, I'll give you guys real quickly as well the kill streaks, just because that's in that same menu selection where you can end up doing that. But you end up having the UAV, counter UAV, Hellstorm, Sentry, Attack Chopper, Mantis, Strike Team, and the Gunship. So the additions here are change ups compared to what we've seen previously. Is the Attack Chopper is very similar to that of the Stealth Chopper. The Mantis is the Cerberus, just renamed and a little bit reskinned as well. The Strike Team seemingly is a little bit more of a dumbed down version of the Paratroop because you end up getting two elite armored soldiers drop in from a chopper to clear positioning and that you can command them using the square button. So that's something that is kind of interesting on how that'll play out, but is something that is relatively seen before, but not in the same sense, I guess. Then we also have the gunship, which is very similar to the AC-130 that we've seen in previous titles as well. So those are the score streaks and that really rounds out the create a class system here within Black Ops 4. A lot of new stuff, a lot of returning stuff, and it's a mashup of all things that we've loved, maybe both old and new and I'm really looking forward to it. I really like how this creative class system is going to work out. I'm looking forward to seeing what else is added in upon release of the beta, upon the release of the full game, all that good stuff because this is still from everything we've had, probably about 20 to 30% of the game itself. So we have so much still to uncover and still so much to actually take a look at. But that is your creative class system, all the secrets and little things hidden throughout there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you found it insightful. And of course, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Are you guys liking the look of everything so far? Are you guys looking forward to anything in particular? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Black Ops 4 content. We're gonna be killing it here with the content. Everything going forward. Super excited to share what I got on the table. So hopefully you guys stick around for that. Subscribe if you guys are new. Follow me over on Twitter if you guys have not done so already. And if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram as well, trying to get more active over there. So that link is as well in the description below. But all that's it now to the boy. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. Take care and peace.